Hi, and welcome to another position of the week. So this time uh, we're dealing with three positions of the week. They're all from the same game. The game is from Gajewski against Wojciechek, played in Krusvika, uh just a few days ago. Uh, as a part of the Polish Championship. Uh, Wojciechek, who is black in this game, uh, won the match against Gajewski 2-0. Uh, this was the first out of two games. And it was, a, it was quite an interesting opposite called a bishop ending. And there's a lot of interesting ideas. If you can hear a dog chewing on a bone in the background, it is not you there's something wrong with. There is a dog chewing in the background. Okay, so in this position here, I'm just going to explain the three positions, the core idea of it, of them. In, the, in this position here, white is seeking a blockade. It's very common in bishop endings, whether they are of the same color or opposite color, that the defending side is defending with a sort of fortress blockade uh, attitude. Whether it's successful or not, doesn't matter to me. It's a fortress, whether it falls or not. Um, so in this position here, uh, Gajewski, he tried to sacrifice uh, the deep pawn. Uh, I will explain why this is a, a mistake. It's a very logical thing. The idea is the king is, uh, is coming to d3. The bishop will be on, on this long diagonal. And it will be difficult for uh, the black king to penetrate. But we will see why that this is a problem. And it is the core problem of uh, fortresses, which is they often fall by Sukhswan. This was very difficult to predict at this point. And in many lines where uh, white needs to draw, um, he will need to play the d4 pawn move at the right time and get rid of this pawn, which is preventing the king to come from uh, the correct square. Um, but in this position where the pawn is still on b6, it is a mistake. First, the pawn has to go to b5 or b4, ideally b4, because then the bishop on, on b3 will be able to, to blockade uh, very well. Um, so in this position, all pawn moves, uh, all bishop moves, sorry, were uh, making a draw. And I have chosen to just go with one of them uh, to illustrate some ideas. Uh, you could, could easily argue I should have gone for another one, but it would be that way either way. They are all sort of equal in value. The three bishop moves that does not lose the bishop. Bishop h5 is slightly dubious. Uh, so the move I've chosen here um, to go with is, is bishop d1. It's a very logical move. Um, White is planning to play king, king e2, king f3, and then possibly g3, maybe move the h-pawn up. And there's a, there's a few lines here. So let's try to look at uh, king e6, which is a very logical move. Now White absolutely has to play bishop a4 to prevent the b-pawn from advancing. And black will have to come over the king. And the key idea here, let me just unload my engine, which was clocking off my machine. The key idea here is the bishop needs to be attacking the b pawn from behind. And there, there are several possible lines here. Uh, for example, if you think of this setup here, White would be very happy to exchange everything and simply wait. Um, but we can also say, let's say black goes here, we go here and we blockade. So one key idea I really wanted to show that is in this position here, it is impossible for black to avoid this blockade. If the king goes to a5, white plays bishop f7, ready to meet b4 with bishop b3. And otherwise, the b-pawn cannot advance. The king goes to the third rank, the pawn is hanging. If it goes to a4, the pawn is pinned. That's why it's very important that the rook, the bishop is, to, is attacking the pawn from behind. Um, so after bishop d1, 
the best uh, try is b5. Now white no longer has this maneuver of bringing the bishop in behind the pawn, um, but still it's coming to b3. But in this position, bishop b3 does not work. The king comes here. And if white was to try uh, bishop f7 here, he would be just a bit too late. And if he tries bishop d4, we come into basically similar to the game. So at this crucial point is the moment to give up the d pawn because the b pawn has now advanced and we can exploit this. So black will take, white will promote the b pawn to a dark square. It's very important that uh, black is not allowed to control squares that dominate the white bishop, but instead the pawns are uh, put on squares where they can be controlled as in, in this. And here in this situation, um, it's a blockade, unlike the game. Uh, so we'll, we'll see the difference later uh, in the game. So uh, in the game, he played d4 and take, and they came like this. And the big difference in this position is that the b pawn has not yet reached the b4 square. This square is the key uh, difference. So we will see this in a few moves. So this happened as, as it would happen. And okay, in this position here, Wojciech uh, is unable to find out the right winning plan. And it's, it's quite basic based on what we already talked about, but it doesn't necessarily makes it makes it easy. So we see that black is two pawns up, but he has trouble creating a pass pawn on the king side. So the idea about how to win this position is to first set up the best possible circumstances, which is here. Already here, um, White is in a bit of a search run. He wants to prevent the move h5. And also his king here is controlling some important squares here, especially the c4 square. Um, so the, the white king has to prevent the, the black king from both coming in and attack g2, and also from uh, assisting the, uh, the b pawn moving forward from these squares. And if the king moves, he will basically he will allow one of these two. So for that reason, white needs to make a bishop move, and this will allow black to advance the h pawn and put it here. And then again, we, we get to a situation where we're waiting for, for Sukhswang. The white bishop has jobs on two diagonals here, and it cannot really leave one of them behind. If it goes to, let's say, c8, then comes this move, which we desperately wanted to prevent. Um, probably even better to put the king on, on b3 because it prevents the king from coming to c2. So in this position, I looked at uh, simply taking the blockade one step back. Uh, here, once again, we see that the king is trying to prevent entry two places. The bishop is trying to prevent action on two flanks. And black simply waits. This is a classical Sukhswang. And OK, in this position, I've chosen to go with bishop b3 as an example. Now here, black is threatening f3. It doesn't matter if it's taken or not. And here we are, the pawn will queen, and black wins. Um, but Wojtasek didn't have the time to work this out and went in the opposite direction. And it's actually only in this position he uh, misses the win. He can go back with king d6 and, and do the same things. Nothing has changed. But the moment he puts the pawn on b4, he loses the b4 square, and there's no longer any entry point. Okay, so the bishop comes around. 
And here they made a lot of moves. And White has successfully created a blockade. I think you can see there's no way of pushing the pawn forward. There's no way of coming in challenging the bishop. There's no way of removing the white king. Uh, so here, why why Kievsky started to go um, for this pawn up here, I do not know, but it is still uh, within the limits of what is reasonable. And then we we got to a, a simple time trouble issue here. They're playing on uh, 30 seconds per move, and anyone who has tried to do that for a long, uh, long period of time know that even the stress wears you out of uh, constantly having to look at the clock. Is it gone? Is it gone? Is it gone? Uh, in this position here, white can, can draw in several ways. You can play uh, king f3 with the idea of playing g3 um, and eliminate the pawn. And the main reason sort of why I, I looked at this game in the first place is because I have a book coming out in about six to eight weeks uh, that's called a matter of endgame technique. And one of my realizations while doing this book um, was that the most important endgame uh, in chess is the bishop uh, for the wrong bishop for the corner. So let's say we have a black H pawn and we have a king blocking it on h1. And because the bishop is a uh, dark squared, it can never force the king away from the h1 square. It can only assist in a stalemate. Um, this end game is, I was surprised at how important it was and how frequent it occurred in the games I was analyzing. And it occurred here again, in a game I was just looking at randomly yesterday. So the easiest draw here, as I said, is king f3 planning to play g3 and, uh, and then h4 and eliminate the pawn. Um, Black can win a bishop down here, but let's say g3, g takes, g takes, and then the h pawn will take away the bishop's uh, attention and the king will take the f pawn. That's uh, called the bishop is uh, basically on, on two diagonals and uh, it generally wants to avoid that. If playing bishop c7 to avoid g3, we can play king g4 and, and take the pawn in, and it will be a draw. Um, but the drawing line I, I liked more here at this point was uh, h4. After take, take, the idea is to go to h1 uh, to avoid uh, the, the uh, to, to get this draw with the bishop and pawn. And the, the g pawn doesn't and make a difference. Black can take it down Pesang if it stalemate's white, but white would still be stalemate in the corner. So we get into a position like this, threatening to go uh, to the corner. And now there, uh, there's this try. King g1, king h1 would just be a draw. Now there's this try. And white can play here in, in many different ways. And it's all draw. I like g4. If bishop f4, we get our end game. It's just a draw. And if takes, it's also a funny a theoretical draw. Again, similarly, uh, there's uh, no way to uh, to black to, to get the king away from, from h1, g2. If he ever takes a g2 square away from him, he will be stalemated in the corner. I should mention here that g3 looks very reasonable, but would, would lose on the spot. Uh, the, the f pawn becomes a pass pawn and, and black wins. In the game, Gajewski was just waiting and he ran into similar issues. Now here, uh, we once again have a uh, Sukhswan. If the white king goes, uh, the black king will come up to, to g3, and then there will be more sukhswangs. And uh, in the game here, after bishop d8, white tried h4, but now king e3, getting a tempo on the bishop, and this race is taken h4, and white was signed. So obviously, there are more uh, finesses in this endgame we could talk about, but uh, this is 
what I have chosen to share with you today in position of the week. If you found this interesting, if you find chess interesting and you want to get better at chess, you want to spend time with good people, you could always visit us in our academy, killerchesstraining.com. And uh, basically, we would uh, love to spend time with you. We'd love to help you get better at chess and uh, we will definitely treat you well. Thank you, and I hope you're enjoying your bone, Lucy. <laughs>